I invite uh, Mr. Krishnan to welcome the group and introduce the resource person to the participant over here. Please take over. This. Yes. Good evening, friends. Welcome, Elena. Uh, just it's uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Dr. Elena Slezakova. is an associate professor with the Marasik University uh, under the Faculty of Arts, Bruno, in Czech Republic. Uh, she's a founder and director of Czech Positive Psychology Center, CPPC. Her scientific interests include mainly hope, which is very, very important. We all live in hopes and uh, mental health and well-being. And Elena is a member of Advisory Council of the International Positive Psychology Association and the country representative of Czech Republic in the European Network for Positive Psychology. We met uh, three years ago in Dindical, and uh, she's a wonderful person from that time, you know, we have been in touch, and uh, she is a blessing, and uh, it is uh, immense pleasure having her, and you know, when I asked her, she said, you know, without any hesitation, she said, you know, yes, I will do, and uh, she's here, and uh, she's very uh, knowledge sharing, and uh, she's very generous in uh, connecting people also. Uh, welcome here, Alina. Um, it's uh, the floor is yours. And uh, in this uh, occasion, I would like to also thank um, uh, Department of Psychology of American College Madurai, uh, and it is uh, it's an initiative of uh, Dr. Suresh Kumar, and we pulled in friends, and you know we are we are doing this. It's a great uh, opportunity for. Uh, participants as well as for us to you know gain more and more knowledge and you know from various places because knowledge is a treasure it uh, you have to hunt for treasure so uh, welcome and uh, floor is yours uh, elena thank you so much thank you very much wanna come ipa irkinge super namaste uh, good evening dobri uh, den thank you very much uh, for your invitation it's a great pleasure and honor for me to uh, share with you some of the research findings on hope. And as you said, uh, this is really one of the key topic for all of us at, um, on all of the continents around the globe. So I'm speaking to you from Czech Republic, which is the central European country. And I often travel to India. I have many friends and colleagues there, especially in South India, Tamil Nadu. So, uh, it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to meet you through uh, this, uh, um, uh, in this in this meeting. And uh, just before I start, so uh, let me just check whether you can hear me well, whether we can see each other. It's okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Can you understand my English? Yes, yes. <laughs> because I'm not, thank you, I'm not a native speaker. Yeah. So I apologize. It's maybe it will not be perfect. And, it's very um, clear once you said the vanakam namaste and also we all understand everything now <laughs> okay good uh, okay so uh, i have prepared a presentation to give you an overview of uh, findings and also some thoughts about applications of these findings on hope and uh, so just let me uh, check whether it works if i share the screen so if you see it can you see it can you see the slide yes yes the yep. value of hope can you yeah 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 okay so and what happens if i want to unshare it yeah stop share sorry i yeah hmm. Okay, so can we do like this, that you would, you would see the slide, uh, slides clearly and you can also see me and, and listen to me. Is it okay? Thank you yeah. so much. Okay, so it's going to be about the value of hope. Um, Ma'am, ma ma you could put it on full screen. Yeah. Um, hope so. <laughs> where will you will you guide me you mean the full screen of uh... you have to do a slideshow there yeah like this yeah fantastic okay yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you so much <laughs> thank you for guiding me <laughs> well 
So there are uh, many psychosocial benefits of hope uh, across cultures, not uh, because, because, culture, uh, because hope is really universal phenomena. So we will not be talking only about the research on hope in European countries, but also, as I mentioned, uh, I, am, I am grateful for collaboration with Indian colleagues. So I will be honored to present you also some findings concerning uh, comparative findings on hope uh, among Czech and, uh, and Indian samples. So uh, I, I love actually the topic of hope. Uh, I've been engaged in, uh, in research on hope for last eight to nine years. And we have been exploring the role of hope among different uh, samples of population, like children or students and adults and also elder people and also people who are homeless and those who are taking care of them and a large sample of general populations from Czech Republic and also, uh, also India and other countries. Mm. You can see the picture, the cover of the book, Hope and Wellbeing. Uh, you can find the summarizing results of my studies on hope there. And if you are interested, so I'll be very happy to share the book for you. It's for free. So anyone who is interested, so uh, just uh, let me know and I'll be, I'll be so happy to, uh, to give it uh, uh, to you as a small gift, let's say. <laughs> well, so uh, uh, I'm not sure how much uh, you know about about psychology of hope so i apologize for those who are expert uh, in this field and just let me briefly um, give you a brief overview on perspectives on hope uh, in, in positive psychology because there are uh, there is a cognitive theory of hope uh, developed by rick snyder who conceptualized hope as a hope for thinking but, uh, but of course, uh, hope can be also understood as a, one of uh, basic positive emotions. And there is uh, Barbara Fredrickson in the United States, who is the leading person in the research of positive emotions. Um, some people, they are naturally hopeful. And uh, that might be the reason why Peterson and Seligman, two main representatives of the field of positive psychology, uh, put hope among the character strengths and virtues, like a personality traits that help us to flourish. And of course, for many of us, hope can be also deeply understood as a transcendental phenomena, which is closely related to our spirituality and meaningfulness. And there is a new concept of so-called perceived hope developed by Dr. Andreas Kraft, and we will be talking about it a little bit later. Um, before we continue, just uh, let me invite you, if you have any questions, if you'd like to clarify anything or if I'm not clear enough, so please be so kind and just, just uh, jump in and uh, put your questions or comments or whatever, if, if necessary. Well, and uh, in our research on hope, we uh, usually use the main two perspectives on hope, which is before mentioned dispositional hope developed by Snyder. This is the approach that um, Alper um, conceptualizes hope more as uh, uh, in, 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 a, in an individualistic and, and more cognitive way. And there are three components of hope for thinking. When we wish or hope for something, so there is always an aim or goal of our hopes and wishes, the subject of hope which should be specific and attainable. And those people who are able to set appropriate, meaningful, specific and attainable goals, those uh, people also show higher level of, uh, of dispositional hope in terms of hopeful thinking. And there is another component of this theory of hope, which is uh, so-called pathways. So it concerns our ability to plan the pathways, the ways, how we can uh, achieve our goals and maintain a mental flexibility in uh, uh, selecting and choosing the right pathway. And of course, there is the third um, 
component which uh, is called agency. It's a motivational aspect, the goal-directed energy we always need not only know what we wish for, what we would like to attain or have and how to get there, but also to keep motivated and energized. And on the other hand, as I mentioned before, there is a new approach, a so-called perceived hope, which was developed by Andreas Kraft from Switzerland. And he understands hope in relation to transcendental and, and spiritual aspects of uh, our experience. So in these terms, perceived hope means uh, feeling hopeful in a deeper sense. It's not about thinking about attainable goals. It more relates to, to situations which we cannot directly control. So we, we do our best, we hope for the best, and there is always a limit where, where things are behind our control. And what, what we still have is, is perceived hope, the fundamental trust in positive outcomes, even in such a difficult situations, which we cannot directly control. So these are two qualities of these concepts. And it's uh, really interesting to see how they work differently in terms of mental health and well-being. So um, some some of you are uh, maybe uh, familiar with the adult dispositional hope scale, which was developed by Snyder, and it's uh, very often used in research of hope. Um, the items actually do not uh, directly concern hope. Uh, if you, when, you, when you look at the examples of items of this scale, so uh, it's like I can think of many ways how to get out of the jam or I pursue my goals, or uh, I believe there are lots of ways around any problem. So actually it's not about hope, it's about how we think about our goals and wishes. The other measure developed by Andreas Kraft is really talking about the feeling of hope. So the, the items are hope improves the quality of my life. It outweighs anxiety. And even in difficult times, I'm able to remain hopeful and um, there are other items as well. So if uh, each of these measures capture slightly different uh, content of, uh, of understanding of hope. Just check in. Is it okay? Are you following me? Can we continue? <laughs> Thank you so yes. much. Yes, please do. Yes, yes, yes please. please. Wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, uh, so, now let me just briefly introduce you some of the research findings uh, of hope on hope we were exploring hope among children so we took a um, sample of 350 children of age uh, between uh, 8 to 14 so the main the mean age was about 10 years and we used not only this positional hope scale but also other measures and uh, we found out that um, those children who show higher dispositional hope, so not only they are generally happier, uh, they also have more friends, they have better relationships with their peers, they are more physically active, they exercise more, and they also spend more quality time with their parents and do better in schools. So it really, uh, looks like uh, like hope thinking ability to think about goals and approve appropriate ways and yeah. keeping yeah. motivated and energized this has many interesting effect on well-being and flourishing and also academic achievement uh, already in in young children then um, we also ask children uh, there was a an open question. Actually, I love adding open questions to, to studies where, when we use questionnaires. So to me, it's always interesting not only use the validated questionnaires, but also ask open questions to, to learn more about, about individual uh, opinions of people. So no, we no. did the same thing uh, uh, in, 
in this research and we ask children what are their wishes, what they hope for, for future and what, what they want to attain. And uh, it was interesting to see how the wishes change during the, the, the lifespan between 8 to 14. So in, in red color, you can see the most frequent wishes. So for the youngest children, the most frequent wishes were related to the material wishes, like I want to have a new pen or, or a toy or, or a bicycle. And these uh, material wishes were predominant also uh, in the age of 10 to 11 years. However, for elder children aged 12 to 14, the most important wishes and hopes related to, uh, were related to social relationships. Like, I want, uh, my mom loves me, and I, hope I, I, I wish to have more friends, and, uh, and so on. Uh, it's interesting really to see how, how different categories of wishes there are, not only material wishes and social relations, but also personal goals, like uh, I wish to uh, be better at schools or category like subjective well-being, which as you see, uh, became more most uh, important in age uh, 12 to 14. Very often we, uh, we got the answers like, I want to be happy. We did not find it as, often in, in earlier ages. And there were also some magic wishes, like I want to fly, or I want to be invisible, or um, some of the wishes, especially in the youngest uh, group, also related to animals, like I want to have a pet animal, or, or dog, or, or or cat or something. And there were also others. And with age, with um, growing age, uh, there were also more mature wishes, like wishes for a better world, for health and peace for everyone. So it was also wonderful to see that also children uh, are able to think in broader categories of hope and harmony and, and well-being for other people. Then we took a step to uh, on a little bit older a sample and we um, measured hope among university students. There were about 300, not about, but exactly 317 of them of mean age 21.8. Uh, and uh, it turns out that uh, this positional hope in terms of hope for thinking was an important predictor or a resource of subjective well-being. So the ability not to give up and not to uh, feel um, hopeless this is something that seems to be very important key for well-being among among young uh, young uh, adults and uh, as we also measured for gratitude and forgiveness it was wonderful to see how together with hope gratitude and and forgiveness this cluster of positive characteristics together contribute significantly to uh, better uh, subjective well-being Actually, those students who were more hopeful about their future, they were also uh, able to look at their past with gratitude and they were more willing to be forgiving for others. So I think these qualities are, uh, are, are very precious among, among young students and they should definitely appreciate it. We also uh, explored hope among elder people uh, there was a small sample because it's not, it was not easy to, to get uh, data from people around 78, 80 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we measured not only dispositional hope, their hope for thinking, but also their perceived um, physical health and meaningfulness of life and life satisfaction. And again, those people who even at old age do not give up their goals, plans, wishes for future, those who keep hopeful. So they not only showed better physical health, but they also reported higher meaningfulness in life, which is crucial for what we call healthy or successful aging. And they also were generally more satisfied with their life. So 
I would say never give up hope when you get older because it seems to have many, many beneficial effects. And we also ask these uh, elder people, what are their wishes? And we compare them and we now together we can see how different categories there are when we compare the wishes of the children and, ch and, and people who are 70 years older. And the main category, and I don't think it's surprising, relates to health. So the main hope and wishes was to become healthy, keep healthy, uh, stay healthy. Uh, about 24% of elder people, they also expressed their hope for peaceful and comfort life. And also they, they were hopeful about well-being of their family members. There were answers like, I only wish my, uh, my children and grandchildren, and grandchildren are happy and healthy. And of course, for elder people around 80, it's also important to keep uh, independent and, um, and be able to live their, uh, their um, life without not relying on everyday help of others. So uh, this was also uh, a category that was, uh, seemed to be important for, uh, for elder people. And some of them also hoped for keep living, uh, like. Uh, hope and wish for having life itself for a longer time. Then uh, we had an opportunity to collect data from a very uh, rare sample of homeless people. There are not many of them, luckily, in the Czech Republic. However, there are some and there are institutions that are offering help and taking care of these people. So we, um, I, I'm really grateful that we had opportunity to collaborate with a Salvation Army organization that was uh, taking care of, uh, of uh, homeless people in our city. And um, we, got data from eight, uh, from 65 of them. And again, we measured their hope and gratitude and positive mental health uh, flourishing. And um, it's, it's, it was wonderful to see that even in such a challenging life situation or life period, uh, such as uh, homelessness, uh, those people who were able to keep hopeful, not to give up and keep hopeful and also be grateful, even for very small things that they were given, let's say, or they still were able to do or maintain. So those were um, the people who uh, showed higher positive mental health in terms of flourishing. And we also ask those homeless people what are their hopes and main wishes for future. Uh, and again, uh, I think the results are quite um, uh, not surprising because the main category of their answers was uh, they hoped for housing, for shelter, own place to stay. They also wished for uh, having work and, uh, and uh, good relationship with their family, uh, personal independence and ability to get back to living a normal life. Um, we also had an opportunity to uh, look at the differences between levels of hope and flourishing and gratitude between a group of homeless people and group of homeless people caregivers, so employees of the homeless uh, shelter. And um, we asked, we, we collecting data from, from, um, from these um, employees of uh, Salvation Army. And that was quite interesting to see that uh, the employees, actually they did not significantly differ from homeless people in levels of hope and gratitude. So both group showed uh, quite average levels of, uh, of hope and gratitude. Uh, however, the caregivers showed significantly higher uh, level of flourishing, positive mental health. And again, similarly to the previous group, those who showed 
those who showed higher hope and gratitude, they also reported uh, better mental health and, and flourishing. Um, flourishing is a term which uh, we can understand and is not, not only feeling good, but function well. It, it goes beyond <coughs> just the positive emotions. So uh, feeling good, uh, function well, this is the flourishing way. Can, yeah, can I continue or do you have any uh, questions or comments or feedbacks? <laughs> Alida, we will finish the presentation, then we will uh, open for questions and answers. Okay, I, I it, agree. Is I it was okay just, with you? Absolutely, I was just checking. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, so these findings show that the content of personal hopes and wishes among specific samples really reflect the developmental stage, the measured hope among children, university students, elder people, uh, as well as situational context and priorities, such as whether you are a homeless person or the one who is taking care of, of those people. So, of course, there is a need or there was a need for further investigation. And uh, our question was, what is the content of hopes and wishes among general population in Czech Republic and also in India? And uh, are there any differences in, in hope and other positive characteristics between these two samples and uh, specifically samples of, of Czech and Indian university students? So this study uh, was uh, conducted under uh, under uh, a large international research program, which is called Hope Barometer. It uh, was launched and it uh, still uh, be led by, it, it is led by Dr. Andreas Kraft from Switzerland. I already mentioned him as, uh, as the author of the perceived hope concept and the perceived hope scale. And uh, since 2013, uh, many other countries uh, around the globe joined the survey. Uh, Germany, France, uh, Czech Republic, India, uh, Malta, Poland, uh, South Africa, United States, and many, many others. Now they are about 15. And um, actually, I was uh, focusing because I love India and I admire Indian culture. So I was quite curious whether there are any differences in the content of hopes and wishes among Czech and Indian samples. So we had the two samples from general population and uh, we asked the question, what do you hope for? What's your, the main personal wish for future? And uh, the participants there selected, they were selecting from about 15 to 20 options and they ranked them uh, from zero, not important, to three, uh, very important. And um, the results shows that the most important wish for a Czech sample was having happy partnership and family. The second most important wish for future was maintaining or improving own physical health. And the third was concerning keeping balance, inner harmony. I love it. <laughs> and the fourth was related to keeping good and trustful relationships with other people, not only family members. And the fifth most important wish and hope for future concerned uh, ability to be engaged in a meaningful and a satisfying task. So not only do what we have to do, but also what we personally find important and meaningful. When we look at the results of Indian sample, you probably already read it, so just let me uh, briefly discuss it. It's interesting to see, and um, I, I believe that uh, the differences are not only because of the cultural differences, but also it's, uh, it could be related to the fact that majority of these Indian sample were students. So for them, the main uh, wish and hope for future was uh, naturally related to success at school and university and future workplace. Also, personal independence and self-determination seems to be very important. Of course, 
good and trustful relationships. I think it's very typical for, for cultivistic uh, culture. However, the question is whether this is um, uh, changing in the time or not. The need for meaningful and satisfying activities and tasks and uh, for, for me, surprisingly, the personal health was, uh, was uh, the fifth uh, most important uh, wish and hope, and not, um, not, not more, but, but fifth. When we uh, asked the, another important question, which was, okay, so now we know what you wish for, what you hope for, but what do you do for having your hopes and, and uh, wishes fulfilled? What are the hope activities? Again, uh, this is interesting because most of these answers are very similar across these very different cultures. So both the Czech and Indian sample, the people said, I, when I think about my wishes, my future plans and hopes. I think a lot, I analyze the circumstances, I inform myself, I gather information. So this is quite in a tight relation to the Snyder's um, theory of hope in terms of hope for thinking. Also, uh, the majority of people, they understand hope as something uh, what, uh, what's related to our own responsibility. So we do not uh, wait for someone or something to do it for us. So we take responsibility and engage and commit ourselves. And for Czech Republic, the fourth and fifth um, activity was uh, motivation and encouragement within family and, and motivating friends. In India, there was a different uh, fifth, uh, fourth uh, uh, response that was um, pointing at the importance of, of spirituality and, and praying to God, which uh, is, uh, is deeply, deeply profound. Well, so now we learn something about the contents of hope and the activities, what people do when they want to pursue their hope. And of course, this is not the end of the story. There is another very important question and it says, Okay, tak, uh, so, so what are those people or what, what are the resources of your hope and who are the people who are transmitting or boosting your hope? And again, uh, there are some similarities and also differences. So for Czech sample, the main resource of hope are significant others like wife, husband or partner. partner. Again, quite individualistic. Um, answer, I give my hope to myself, no one can do it for me. The friends and, and people who, who mastered their fate or challenging life situations uh, admirably, so they also can serve as, as a wonderful example and support for us when we want to uh, struggle for or, or attain our own goals and wishes. And of course, parents and grandparents, they also serve as a sources of hope. Uh, in Indian sample, the number one question, the most frequently given answer was, uh, I give hope to myself. So there is a high level of perceived responsibility for our hopefulness. And then there, is, there are many other resources like parents, grandparents, uh, friends, teachers, educators, gurus. And of course, um, significant others such as, uh, such as wife and husband and partners. So it was interesting to see uh, the similarities and differences between contents, between uh, activities and resources of hope among Czech and, uh, and Indian populations. And then uh, we uh, step to another question. If, if hope seems to be so important, so what are the, the psychosocial predictors across cultures? And our aim was uh, actually to investigate whether the, the feeling of hope, the perceived hope, is more nourished and related to social factors such as positive relationship with others or perceived loneliness or internal dispositional traits such as uh, dispositional optimisms. 
or whether there is a predominant role of self-transcendence in terms of spirituality and generativity. Generativity, uh, uh, just let me briefly explain, is a tendency or inner urge or need to do something good for others, something good for, for next generations to, to uh, leave a good mark on, 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 on others' lives. So again, we wanted to explore these differences between Czech and Indian populations. And also the interesting question was, what is the role of, uh, of demographic variables? So, uh, like, uh, such as uh, gender or educational level or uh, age. So, how, well, how this is related to the level of hope. So, these are the results of, uh, of uh, quantitative analysis. That was a different sample than, than the previous one. We had uh, two. 140 respondents aged 19 to 21, uh, to, sorry, 29. So they're, all of them were university students in Czech Republic or in India. And uh, it's interesting to see that these two culturally different samples did not significantly differ in perceived hope and generativity. So these green numbers, they say, there was no significant difference in the mean levels of perceived hope and generativity. However, uh, Czech uh, students, they reported uh, significantly higher positive relationship with others, higher optimism, and higher perceived importance of spirituality. The last one was rather um, surprising because uh, you may know or may not, I'm not sure, Czech Republic is one of the European countries with the lowest rate of religious people. There are about five to 10% of Catholics. Uh, then there are about 40% of people who claim the, themselves as being spiritual, but not religious. And then the rest are those who uh, claim uh, as they are, they are uh, atheists, they are not uh, engaged in any spiritual or, or religious beliefs. So in this um, relation, it's interesting to see that for uh, many uh, Indian Czech, Czech students who are trying to find their answers to the profound existential and spiritual questions, so for them, uh, the, the importance of spirituality is, uh, is reported as higher uh, in comparison to, to Indian students. So that was there, these were results of, uh, of um, differences. Uh, then we looked at the correlations and also regression. We, we ran the regression analysis, uh, which showed us what are the predictors or, if you wish, resources of perceived hope among Czech and Indian uh, university students. And uh, there are slightly different resources also of, of um, hopeful feelings. For Czech Republic, uh, it shows that the main uh, significant predictor or a resource of perceived hope is dispositional optimism. Actually, it makes sense. We can hardly become hopeful if we develop pessimistic, catastrophic, negative scenarios and expectations about future. So being able to keep optimistic approach and attitude to life, of course, has a positive effect on a feeling of hope in our life. And the second uh, important significant resource of uh, perceived hope in Czech sample was generativity. Actually, it's wonderful to see that those people who tend to or who are higher on willingness or need to help to other people, do good for others, be useful, do something valuable for others. So those people who, who invest, invest their time and energy, it kind of comes back to them in, as a side effect in, uh, in a form of higher perceived hope in life. And the third predictor 
is loneliness. It's a negative predictor. And it's interesting to see that uh, the result, results suggest that for Czech sample, um, for having higher hope, is more important not to be lonely, not to be isolated, than having good positive relationships with people around us. And when we look at the, at the, the results for Indian sample, uh, there are similarities. So again, those who keep optimistic and do not give up hope and do not, uh, do not give up optimistic attitude towards future, and those who tend to do good for others, they also maintain their hopeful feelings about, about their life. And the loneliness, spirituality, and positive relations, they um, seem not to play such an important role. So this concerns the question about the role of demographic factors, uh, which uh, can affect the, the levels of perceived hope in terms of deeper feeling of hope and dispositional hope, the other, which is more about hope for thinking. There are some interesting uh, differences. Uh, these differences were analyzed on a larger sample of Czech populations. Uh, population, we had more than 1,400 respondents aged 18 to 80. So it was a really good, a good sample. And the results shows that uh, females, uh, scored significantly higher in mean levels of perceived hope than males, that the lowest perceived hope was in the age group of 18 to 90, uh, sorry, to 29, the, the, the group of young adults, or uh, as we call them, the emerging adults. And the highest perceived hope was in the age group 50 to 51. So 59, sorry. So it shows that we can somehow grow into hope. And it, um, it makes a sense because we already know that perceived hope is tightly related to meaningfulness in life. And there is um, already um, a proof or there are studies showing that meaning in life tends to increase with age. So we have a similar trend here. The, the perceived hope seemed to increase with age. When we looked at the differences in the levels of perceived hope in relation to family status, so the lowest, uh, lowest perceived hope was found among singles, those who are living alone without any partner or husband or a wife. And the highest hope was among married or those who were living with their partner. We also looked at the importance of education. And yes, repeatedly, not only in this study, but also the previous studies, we found that, that those who uh, attain higher education, so university education or, or higher or college, so they, they report higher perceived hope. And the last um, result concerns, again, generativity. So when we specifically asked the respondents whether they are engaged in any kind of volunteering or charity activity, and those who said yes, they significantly showed higher level of perceived hope. When we look at the dispositional hope, there are interesting gender differences. So while, while females showed higher perceived hope, higher in feeling of hope, so males scored significantly higher in, in hopeful thinking. The lowest hopeful thinking was found in the age group of 30s, 30 to 39. And again, there is a trend of increase of dispositional hope with the age. The, the highest was in age group 50 to 59. Similarly to perceived hope, again, the higher dispositional hope, hope thinking, was found among married people or those who are living in a partnership and those who have a higher education and those 
or have been engaged in any kind of volunteering or charity activities. So I'm coming slowly to the end and I'd like to just briefly introduce you uh, or present you the study which is uh, we, which we just completed. It's a very new and you are the first actually who hear about that uh, and we prepared the publication and the main research question was can hope and other positive characteristics be transmitted within the family? And um, we, we got data from uh, three, uh, sorry, from 73 triads, 73 families, complete data from mothers, fathers, and children. And so we have 73 mothers of mean age 51 years, 73 fathers mean age 53, and 73 children uh, of mean age 24. And we compared their level of life satisfaction, dispositional hope, hope for thinking, and perceived hope, and also gratitude. And the results show that mothers, fathers, and children, they did not significantly differ in levels of life satisfaction and hope for thinking. However, the group of children showed significantly higher level of gratitude and lower level of perceived hope, which is in accordance with previous findings that I presented just a, a minute ago about the relationships uh, of perceived hope with age. Actually, um, the higher level of gratitude among the youngest generation, that was surprising and very encouraging. <laughs> Because sometimes we think about young children or sorry, young young people as uh, not not very grateful, but uh, obviously they are able to acknowledge and appreciate all the good things and opportunities they have in their lives, and in our study even more than their parents. So these were the differences between and similarities between the measured uh, variables. And then we looked whether there are similarities between these variables and whether there is a trend of uh, what we call intergenerational transmission. And these results are, are quite interesting and they are, they are saying that the higher is mother's uh, life satisfaction, the higher, of course, is father's uh, life satisfaction. Uh, so, the higher is hope for thinking in mothers, the higher is also hope, hope for thinking in fathers. And when we looked, so this is something that makes happy partnership, I would say. And when we look in these generational relations, it shows that mothers probably are able to transmit gratitude better than other characteristics we measured because mothers who were showing higher gratitude they also uh, had children who had uh, a higher gratitude and fathers those fathers who showed higher hope for thinking so their children were also higher in in hope for thinking so while mothers probably are very good at transmitting these positive emotions and grateful attitude to, to life. Fathers are those who probably um, develop the cognitive style uh, and optimistic and hopeful thinking about future. When we again try to explain these uh, results in detail, so of course these are correlations um, which we only have explain it as, as the effect of uh, fathers and mothers on children, but we still believe this is plausible explanation because already Snyder in his work on hope uh, claimed that uh, uh, there is... Ale uh, there Alena? Is, uh, yes? Alena? Uh, uh, you can, I know, uh, by another five minutes, we can start the question and answer. Absolutely, this is yeah. one of the last slides. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank but thank, thank you. you, yeah. So I just wanted to add that um, 
in development of hope and other positive characteristics uh, and observational learning can, can take place. So better than teaching or educating children how they should behave or what they should do and should say and should not do. So maybe if we serve as a positive example, then they can learn more through observational learning and they can uh, develop more hopeful and grateful attitude to life. And another very, very, very new uh, research study which we have just completed uh, tries to answer the question whether mindfulness meditation can increase hope. There have been many studies showing many positive and beneficial effects of mindfulness. And also in our studies, when we measured uh, perceived stress and perceived hope and harmony in life and, uh, and the gratitude and other variables, it has been shown that after the eight weeks of mindfulness training, MBSR, mindfulness-based stress reduction program, uh, program um, in comparison to control group, those uh, members of experimental group showed higher hope, harmony, mindfulness, and gratitude, and significant uh, decrease in, uh, in, uh, in perceived stress. So mindfulness uh, meditation or any kind of meditation seem to be another valuable resource of inner harmony, balance, and also hope towards future. So yeah. this, we are coming to the end. And yeah. the last uh, thing to say is that, of course, there are many ways how we can uh, develop and maintain our hope. There are many hope interventions uh, which aim to the cognitive building and, and building the capacity, the capacity for, for mindful thinking, like uh, goal-directed thinking and boosting uh, agency and finding the pathways and ways. But the aim of this presentation was to point at the transcendental aspect of hope. And again, let me remind you that we can become and be more hopeful when we develop positive relationships, when we try to help others and help nature, animals, anyone, when we cultivate our meaningfulness in life, and when we also do not forget our spiritual dimension and uh, may engage in, in meditation practice and other spiritual practices. So there are many, many benefits of hope, both on individual and society level. And um, I hope that uh, some of these results I, I was uh, presenting you uh, make uh, sense and hopefully some of these are, are also a source of inspiration. And these are my last words for, for now. I want to thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I, I'll be happy to react or respond to your questions or comments. And you can also note my email if you wish to get any of okay. us on, uh, on hope or book on hope. So feel free to contact me. I'll be very happy to hear from you. Thank you. Nandri uh, Vanakam. Alina, this was a fantastic uh, presentation. And you know, you have shared your research, which is uh, such a hard work. You know, you have done it in Czechoslovakia, in uh, Czech Republic and uh, India. And you know, it, it has given, you know, you, it made, uh, you know, you made us to feel that, you know, you are, you are also part of us, you know, and you, you have been keep coming here also. And uh, uh, your studies also, you know, shows that, you know, uh, uh, I mean, you know, that enhances our hope, uh, you know, for, for betterment. Um, thank you so very much. And um, um, before the floor opens for questions, you know, um, here, uh, uh, Dr. Shubha, she is there, who is also, uh, uh, you know, she is a professor and Dr. Suresh, they are, they, they, they are in the... Uh, you know, uh, faculty, and so you know, they will be uh, asking questions, then it goes to the floor. Yeah, yes, you are uh, welcome. And, you. and 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 Dr. Veena will take care of uh, uh, queuing the questions. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Elida Man. Uh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Mikta Nandri, thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Hope is what is keeping us going in, during this pandemic time. 
uh, and uh, your session has really uh, no that has really uh, wakened the hope in us thank you so much and also for the wonderful uh, study you have presented i'm sure we have a lot of questions uh, i request subhashree ma'am to please go ahead thank you very much vanakkam uh, the it was a fantastic presentation on hope and uh, hopefully we all uh, see you again here in india uh, mm -hmm. calling you for some conference and uh, i really plan for that and i really wanted to know the youngsters who are actually in the uh, i mean uh, those who are in colleges or in school uh, how to instill hope in them one is about uh, from your study i could see that parents if they are hopeful it is actually transmitted in their family other than this what kind of small practices we can do practical tips can you share with us thank you very much for your question um yeah as as mentioned there are several ways and uh, several approaches to hope uh, what i do with my students i also uh, when i teach positive psychology subjects so i always give them some seminar works or homeworks and one of them relates to hope and uh, i ask them to think about what are their main goals and wishes and hopes then the next question is uh, what uh, whether they can set a kind of deadline for uh, attaining this one specific the very important goal and the deadline is very important because i think we all know it when we have some plans and we do not set a specific deadline so we can always postpone it and we will never get there so it can be like okay so students writes i want to pass through this exam and i want to learn these materials or 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 study or go through this book until the end of may okay so this is the clear goal and there is a deadline and then the next step is what prevents you from uh, from uh, attaining these goals because of course it's uh, it's wise to know that there are always some obstacles so what is it is it poor time management or is it uh, is it uh, um, poor motivation or is uh, or it's not clear what what we shall uh, learn or study for for examination so it's quite important to be clear about about the obstacles and the next question they can answer to themselves is what can help me or who can help me to attain this goal so is it my father or my brother or my friends or schoolmate so kind of gather the resources which are around us and sometimes we are too ashamed to, uh, to ask for help or recommendation so the aim of this question is to think about uh, resources and and um, and uh, people or or whatever whatever or, or um, other experiences or recommendations which we can get from people and which we can use for attaining our goals so these questions are quite important uh, what what is the goal and aim or wish uh, until when we want to reach it what are the obstacles and how we can cope with them what are the strengths or potentials or resources of hope and then i also also ask them what they can do for maintaining this goal this month and what can they do this week and what they can do tomorrow and what can they do today so they also write down what they can do in these periods of time and of course the most important is what they can do today because we shape our future from now from today so every postponing to tomorrow next monday uh, and so on always uh, makes it harder to to attain the goal so now we are talking about this hope of thinking which relates to goals that are attainable this is the dispositional hope but sometimes uh, there are students who have a, a family member who is seriously ill and this is the typical situation we just hope we pray and we, we are 
we try to do the best we can do, but we have certain limits and then we only hope. And our research suggests that when we not only hope, but also look around ourselves and think about, okay, so maybe I'm not the only one who is suffering now. And is there anything I can do for other people or any living beings? Is there anything I can give and share? So this step out of our own needs and wishes and, and self-centered uh, scenarios, it really has an effect because when we step in altruistic and empathic way of living, so this comes back as, uh, as a higher feeling of hope. Does it make sense? <laughs> Uh, we can actually go with other questions. Thank you, Shubhaman. Our next question is from Krishnan, sir. And uh, uh, participants, kindly raise your uh, hand. And we have gone through the questions. We will ask them one by one. Yeah, next is Sobhya. Sobhya Manimutu, your question is next. Krishnan, sir, please go ahead. My, my question, you know, when, uh, when you have uh, interviewed uh, Indian uh, students or kids, whatever, um, how did they respond? And uh, I mean, you know, it is not as a statistics question. Whether they were cheerful, you know, how they have responded, what was their uh, reaction to the questions when they were approached for the study? That is what I just wanted to know. Uh, if, if I understand uh, clearly your question, so it was what was the reaction of the students on the questionnaire? Is it so? Yeah. Actually, hard to say <laughs> because we used the online anonymous questionnaire. Okay. Which was, okay, then, which then was, it's fine. <laughs> and maybe but, some responses I would like to know whether you know how cheerful they are. You know, sometimes you know, when they express it even in writing. You would be able to find out, you know, if there are some uh, uh, qualitative uh, questions. If you had, I don't know. Uh, so there, you know, how the reactions would be. You know, probably sometimes, you know, they write, you know, elaborately with, you know, you can see the writings with, you know, lots of uh, cheer in it, you know, whatever the emotions. So I just wanted to yeah. check that. Actually, it's a wonderful idea. So next time we can definitely incorporate this question as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And next is from Sobia. Sobia. Yes. Yes. Uh, good evening, ma'am. And that was an informative session and it was an elaborative session as well. And special hi to Subhashti, ma'am. Only today I'm sharing a screen with her, I think. So happy to see you all again. So, ma'am, my question is, uh, so in case of uh, students of adolescents, yeah, in case of students of adolescents uh, in your study, uh, uh, I don't know whether you have attempted to know about uh, the um, um, what to say the sense of uh, hope for those children with relation to financial stability of the family. Have you ever touched that? Uh, is it like that? Can you able to understand my question? Can I come yeah, again? Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma so I just want to know whether this hope is just connected to the current students of both country, maybe the Republic of. Uh, your place and the Indian students have their connection to hope with the financial stability of themselves or to the family or it is independent. I just yeah. wanted to know about that variable. Yes. Uh, thank you. It's a very interesting question. However, unfortunately, we did not include this question about financial stability and, and financial background. Actually, in the Czech Republic, uh, there are not uh, very... Um, big um, differences in, in social status and, and financial stability among, among university students. So um, we, we, yeah, we didn't think about that or it was not the, the research question. Oh, was not in the research. Okay. Yeah. Probably, I think that would be the very sensible uh, research that we can take in India. Uh, so I think uh, that in that, that angle, we, that may suit in India. Okay, sure, okay. ma'am. Thanks for that, and we'll just work on it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. Uh, Thank you I so think it's a, it's a wonderful idea, actually. And from yeah. my own experience, when uh, I've been many times to India, so um, uh, from my experience, the most yeah. striking um, 
experience is that even people who are very poor are living in very simple conditions. So they are able to keep their hope, their, their love, their kindness, they're very yes, generous. Yes. So I had yes. only best experience with yes, people yes. from different uh, social levels and economical levels. So I think you as Indian people can really teach us about, uh, about yes. holding the hope even at the uh, Absolutely. crisis. Yes, and yes. about the priorities and yes, what yes. is really important in life. Yes, so even yes. those people who are who are living in simple conditions and and, yes, and, yes. and 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 poor people, so if they maintain a loving, close relationship in family and 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 yeah. developing their spiritual life, I think these are so important resources. Yeah, it was just uh, critching my mind for the long because, uh, as you told, uh, we people of Indians mostly probably hold a responsibility since we are interconnected to the family and the loved ones so close. So automatically the responsibility comes. So of course we will work for the hope to the fullest, of course, in, this, in the ratio, uh, probably. So I always have this, whether this financial stability factor is hitting them down in their process. So I just want to know whether the correction to be made or for the Indian children. And that too, nowadays I feel in the case of adolescents, when we work on Indian children, I'm working as a career counselor and a student counselor for adolescent children. So when probably I could see that uh, the peer pressure is not only coming up on the physical appearance of the children or the diversity in their culture, it is also coming across nowadays. It's em slightly emerging on the financial stability of them and the family. So probably I think we can, uh, we can look forward to it. Maybe I, I have given an introduction to a study. So let's see how it works and we'll, we'll just get it, get it done. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank next you. question, yeah, thank you. Next question is from Babika Aguja. Next, uh, Raghuram sir. So after Babika, Raghuram sir will be asking the question. Yeah, Babika. Yeah, good evening, good evening, ma'am. Uh, am I audible, ma'am? Good evening. Good okay. to see you. Uh, yeah, my question is, ma'am, that uh, how we can develop the value of hope, or how can we teach the value of hope among children, like? Grade one kids, they are very small kids. You mean very small? Uh, which age actually? Age five, five to six, or five to seven? Yeah. I think the best thing how we can develop any positive. If you keep mm -hmm. over, if you if you keep optimistic about future, if you are the person right. who is, who is uh, trying to find solutions and, and open doors to, to the future, and if you are not the person who is giving up and complaining and, and sticking to the only possible uh, thing, and when we do not get it, so we are, we are disappointed and, mm -hmm. and devastated. So I think specifically for young children, it's so important already mentioned uh, observation yeah, right. and learning mm -hmm. so um, and of course dispositional characteristics can also uh, play a role but when you will be and i'm sure you are the best uh, version of yourselves so this is the best you can do for your children this is my humble opinion yeah these are actually the ideals ideals for these yeah and sorry i didn't yeah, but how is related to emotional stability among us? Can we relate both things? Um, sorry, uh, uh, I did not uh, understand well. So the question was about emotional stability of children. No, I'm asking that how uh, hope is related to emotional stability. It's, it's tightly related to emotional stability because when we think about opposite of hope, so it's hopeless mm. and hopelessness. And this is uh, the, the key risk factor for developing depression and anxiety and many other mental problems. Mm. So ability to keep hopeful. Um, sometimes we just, uh, maybe we are not aware enough that uh, hope is really something that keeps us going from the very beginning of the day when we uh, wake up. So if we have no hope that we can survive the next day, so we would probably uh, did not step out from the bed. So yeah, hope uh, right. in terms of 
believing that things can go well and that we can do uh, anything for, for change for better, but also st still keep open-minded. Uh, I, I would like to um, avoid any misunderstanding. So hope, being hopeful about mm. specific goal or, or outcome does not mean that we should cling on that outcome and, and suffer uh, unless we don't get it. So to be able to balance it with open-mindedness and flexibility and having also um, alternative goals so uh, this is also, uh, to me, important uh, aspect of, of self-regulation and self-stability. Mm. Thank you so much, ma'am. The next question thank is you, from Raghuram, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Bhagavan. Uh, ma'am, it was a very nice presentation. So you. you have mentioned many of the studies. Uh, you are compared between India and other countries also. And all the age you have mentioned, all the things, ma'am. Um, I have a few doubts, ma'am. We are. We used to see the mentally ill patients, especially depression patients. So those who are very distressed conditions, so how we can install the hope with them? Um, sorry, uh, can you be more specific about your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How we can install the hope with the distressed person? Distressed person, like uh, like yeah. people with higher stress or depression. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. Thank you. It's it's very very important uh, question, and uh, sometimes we can or mostly uh, we can. There is some some. Okay. <laughs> sometimes we can. Excuse can, me. Somebody is. I know. Please mute your mic, please. If you want to talk, you can mute your mic and talk. When you are raising the question, please. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well. A lack of hope really can lead to to higher stress and, and depression. Um, however, we, I believe we should be sensitive about uh, popping the topic of hope to those people who are in a severe conditions or who are really depressed. Because when people are in, a, in deep depression, and we ask them, so okay, so let's speak, uh, let's talk about hope. So what are your plans, your wishes, your hopes. So naturally, we get the reaction like, how can you ask me? I have no hopes. I have no imaginations about my better job. And then the person can feel like we don't understand it at all. So what, uh, what I would recommend, and uh, this is uh, tightly related to the research we have done previously, showing how important the uh, role is played by hope in so-called post-traumatic growth. People are suffering from depression, anxiety, and stress after traumatic experience, experience or, or traumatic events. So what I believe we can do, we may not only directly address the question of hope, but we can be more sensitive and ask the question or offer the topic in a way like, yes, I feel with you, I understand you, you are in a challenging life situations and I, I feel and bear your, your stress or depression or anxiety and I respect it and, and I want to make you feel free to express any kind of negative feelings or thoughts. But let's try to also open the space for the question whether everything is um, going only in the wrong way or if everything is really bad or if really every situation we are going through now is only bad and, and painful or could there be anything that is not so painful, not so bad, maybe a kind of beneficial and it's wonderful to see when we um, kindly and openly um, offer these topics of more structured view on our experience, so we can see that the person not only feels that we acknowledge and, and respect the, all the negative, negative feelings, but also offer the space for questions like, okay, so 
can here be also anything good. And this to me is the starting point which we can use for leading or facilitating the patient out uh, of depression because we can slowly, gradually talk about these changes or these situations which are not only bad or painful or getting worse, but what are uh, the experiences or situations that are also <laughs> or, um, or good. And in our research of post-traumatic growth, it shows those people who lost their beloved one family member, or those people who lost their property, or those people who lost their own health, with certain time delay, of course, were able to find many benefits in terms of feeling more grounded, uh, uh, being able to um, set the right, uh, right values in life, being able to find out their inner strengths or getting and receiving support from other people. So I would, I would be very sensitive about this topic, but I would not give up uh, open topic of hope with, depression, uh, with people with depression and under a high stress. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's useful to balance it, both acknowledge the negativity and also offer gently the topic of whether all the changes were or, or situations or emotions are only bad and, and painful. Mm, does it make sense? Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, one question. Uh, was your st what is the research methodology you used for your study? Well, um, we usually use the questionnaires, so quantitative methodology. We use validated questionnaires. We uh, use, uh, when we do international studies, so we use English version of questionnaires for Indian samples. And when we, we um, collect data, data in Czech Republic, so we have to use uh, to translate the methods and validate in our language. And we also use a qualitative approach, as I already mentioned during my presentation. I love using open questions and then uh, the answers, uh, they can really put uh, uh, the light on, on the results of uh, or interpretation and understanding uh, results of uh, quantitative uh, methods. So they yeah, have used both of these methods. And also in experimental studies, such was the, um, the study on effects of mindfulness meditation on, on mental health and well-being. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I request Akshay Lakshmi to give feedback. Uh, and the participants kindly post your questions to mywebinarfeedback at gmail.com. We will send it to the expert and uh, definitely she will answer to your queries. Akshay Lakshmi, can you give the feedback and later woke up thanks by Ekta. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful presentation, ma'am. As you have given a lot of information based on your research work as such, uh, the authenticity of the information was seen well and uh, we could relate a lot to your study. And thank you so much for the study and uh, uh, please do be in contact and thank you so much, ma'am. We have got a lot of information from this session. It's really help helpful for us. Thank you. Thank you very much and let's keep in touch. And anyone who is interested in collaboration, just feel free to contact me. I'll be very happy to develop collaboration between uh, Indiana and scholars and, uh, and our university. Definitely. Yes. UK again and Ekta Jain, it's all yours to give both of thanks for our wonderful episode. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Dr. Lena, for giving us such a elaborate yet very, very precise uh, explanation of how um, hope as a concept is understood. Um, we also understood it from the research point of view, which was very, very interesting for us, which we have, in fact, in a lot of uh, sessions, we were looking forward to more research basis. So we got a lot of inputs from their side. So you gave us a personal experience, which was very, very amazing. Thanks a lot for uh, such a wonderful, and I'm, I'm very happy that you gave us a lot more uh, feedback in terms of the answers that you gave, that gave us a lot more clarity after the session. Uh, thank you very much and hope 
hopefully we will be getting more sessions from you and learning a lot more on various other topics that you are an expert in thank you very much dr leena yeah and i want to express my gratitude for krishnan sir and suresh kumar sir for having such a wonderful session and uh, hopefully and uh, thank you participants for all, for all your love support keep supporting us we'll have more and more wonderful sessions like this thank you dr jilina thank you so much krishnan sir a few words from you alina thank you so very much uh, let's stay in touch and um, let's see you know if time permits for you we can also uh, you know if uh, if possible then you know you can also come out with another concept and i was also trying to uh, reach uh, andreas but you know i think no he is uh, I, i i couldn't do it so it's nice that i sent you some pictures also so thank you so very much um, and we'll stay in touch and you know it is um, you know i have no words to express my gratitude thank you so very much i thank you so much for your invitation and for your kind attention and wonderful feedbacks it was a real pleasure and honor for me to be here with you i i feel very close to you despite the distance of thousands of kilometers my heart goes with you and please take care be safe you and your families and i really hope we will meet again whether through zoom or or sure. hopefully in person one day so sure. please take care and and keep hopeful sure hopefully thank we you. also wish the same for you be safe thank you so much from the core team thank you